Welcome back, Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute. And today we're talking about something that is of the utmost importance. How can we help prevent diabetes? Doctor? Well, here's the, here's the interesting observation. Okay, and the observation is this, that sometime around 1970, okay, we discovered something very interesting, and that's that cholesterol may have an association with heart disease. Now, it's a, it's a, a minor risk, actually, but there it is, and so we made our patients drop cholesterol and substitute soy. And all of a sudden, people started getting fat. Okay, the obesity epidemic was medically induced. Okay, this is the way that it goes. This was, a, this was not a federal um, conspiracy. This is just collective stupidity, okay? An association statistically doesn't imply causality. That's a freshman 101 statistic error. You would have failed the exam on that one. The country failed it on this one. Now, as people started getting heavier, they started pulling other things out of their diet as well and started substituting things. And lo and behold, there's now a second epidemic. It's called diabetes, and what are we doing for it? We're equally stupid. We're out there doing things to give people additional insulin. So if you watch the television, you can look at the commercials, and there are newer and more expensive insulins out there that work even better. But what do they do? They make you fatter and fatter. So is the obesity the cause of the diabetes? Or is it simply a sign that there's a problem? Well, let's do a little bit of thought on this one. Insulin. Insulin is a hormone. Insulin controls or lowers blood sugar, but it also does something else very interesting. Okay, it lays fat on you. So the higher your insulin level, the fatter you get. The fatter you get, the more insulin that you need. And it starts this cycle that makes you balloon out like the Goodyear blimp. So how do we handle this? Okay, first things first. What causes the diabetes? Because if you can deal with the causes of the diabetes, you can then lower your insulin. High insulin? increased risk of Alzheimer's. Gee, how interesting. Increases in insulin, bump up your triglycerides, increases your risk of stroke and heart attack. So if you don't care about anything else, listen to this. You need to know your insulin level, not your A1C, not your blood sugar. Those are cute. Those are for amateurs. Those are for wannabes. But you better know your insulin level because the insulin to glucose ratio is what drives this. You want to see an insulin level below 10. Okay, the normal values don't reflect health. Okay, how do I know this? About 15,000 insulin levels that have performed myself in my office. I've got a general idea of what these numbers <laughs> should be. Okay, the insulin should be below 10. Now, how does this happen? Why does your body kick out more and more insulin? Now, you're not getting healthier as you're gaining pound after pound after pound. Okay, you are not getting healthier. Insulin is not a healthy response. There's something called the insulin receptor. The insulin receptor is what becomes dysfunctional. The body needs more and more insulin to beat the heck out of this receptor to lower your blood sugar. In the process, it kills you, okay? The sweeter you get, the sicker you get. It's very, very simple. So how does this insulin receptor break? And before your eyes glaze over, okay, understand that all of this was supposed to be in your groundwater, okay? The water that you drink is supposed to contain two uh, two metal ions. One's called chromium, the, the other one's called vanadium. Chromium and vanadium are necessary for the insulin receptor to work. Now, chromium is an odd one. Vanadium, also rather odd. They, ha they can have different valences. Now, I'm not going to get into the chemistry, but it's important to understand that while it's a mineral, it has different forms, and the different forms are very, very specific to the action in the body. So you need your vanadium, you need your chromium, but they need to be set up properly and they need to be bioavailable. And this is important. If you consume enough chromium and vanadium, frequently the insulin levels drop, the weight drops off because your body is no longer being stimulated by the insulin, and guess what? You start getting healthier. It, it, it's fascinating the way this thing works. When the, when the body is missing a piece, when it's missing something essential, it breaks. What a surprise. Man, that ought to be all over the news. If, you, if you're missing something, you might get sick. But these things have names, and the names are very, very specific. So what else can you do uh, about the diabetes? What can you do to understand how this thing works? So vanadium and chromium are essential in the right ratios. So what do we do? We, we cobbled together chromium polynicotinate and something called vanadyl sulfate. In the appropriate ratios, put it together, and the product's called Diabetstat. 
We use it as a primary weight loss medication, but guess what? It lowers blood sugar, lowers triglycerides, lowers insulin. Remarkable, wow. remarkable stuff. What else does it contain? Alpha lipoic acid and cinnamon. Now, what do you know about that? What does the alpha lipoic acid do? Sensitizes the cells to, in, in, uh, to the insulin, as does the cinnamon. So the combination works very, very easily. It's not terribly expensive. It does sometimes make your poop turn a little bit green. Okay, why does it do that? Because now your gut is starting to work better, and the bile that's in your in your gallbladder, or should have been in the gallbladder that was once there, now passes through faster. And before it has a chance to turn from a yellowish color to green to brown to black, it passes through at an earlier stage in chemical degradation. That's one of the ways we know that we're treating people properly. Okay, now for the gallbladder, we should be taking NAC and acetylcysteine. Okay. It also works oddly enough, to treat the diabetes. So Whoa. when, oh, it, it keeps coming around and around and around. So yes, you're treating the gallbladder and liver, you're treating the sinuses, you're treating treating the pancreas, and oddly enough, N-acetylcysteine is helpful for individuals with certain types of thyroid conditions. So what we do, somebody comes in the office, Ooh. they go, well, I think I have diabetes. Why do you think you have diabetes? Well, they were, t they were told they might have it. That's usually a good indicator. The medications they're on might suggest it. But their insulin level is what dictates it. Very, very few adults come in with low insulin levels and high blood sugars. Maybe one in 100. Most of them come in with high insulins and high blood sugars. So the first thing that you do is get them started on the appropriate mineral, mineral combination. Metformin is typically very helpful because it sensitizes uh, your, the insulin through an enzyme called, or protein actually, called MAPK, okay? And then you start cobbling things in as necessary. So are we understanding that some doctors may react and call diabetes way too soon? Oh, yeah. By, by doing the wrong test. Way too soon and way too late. It's both, okay? They'll, they'll call it too soon. Well, you're, you're, you're really, really heavy and your blood sugar is 107, therefore you're pre-diabetic. Heck, you were probably pre-diabetic or you had diabetes for the past 15 years. If they checked the insulin level to see when it raises, that is when the disaster occurs. You don't wait 15 years and 35, 40, or 50 pounds or more before you treat this. This is, this is idiocy, but this is what we've got out there. They check an A1C. What does that mean? You had one bad day in the past 90 days. That is the least sensitive of all the tests. It's the one most doctors lean on as a screening test. All it takes is eating one extra Heath bar, for God's sake, and you're going to end up with an elevated A1C. Congratulations, but it tells you nothing about the pathology. There are many, many, many ways to treat diabetes without using insulin, and I take it as a certain amount of pride getting people off of insulin. How do you do this? By dealing with the underlying pathology. There are medications that you have for, uh, at, at, your, at your disposal, some of which used to be prescription. Vanadyl sulfate was the first diabetes prescription ever introduced. Vanadyl sulfate. Ask your family doctor about vanadyl mm -hmm. sulfate. That was the first medication. Now, we talked months ago about a new protocol that you have introduced to this audience, and that is a three-day ongoing test. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's called a CGM. And so we are the first in Central Florida to be doing these things on a routine basis. And what you do, it's a it's a nearly a painless procedure. It, you, know, you feel a little, little stick in the skin. It's like, like getting a shot. And this plastic probe sits under the skin and checks your blood sugar every five minutes for three days. Okay, now why would you do that? Because it tells you when and where you need your medications and where you're screwing up. So if I tell my patients, oh, well, I need you to take this three times a day. They ask me when, and I go, well, how about breakfast, dinner, bedtime? Because that's those are three times everybody can think. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it should be two o'clock to treat mm. a, a four o'clock spike, or it could be an eight o'clock spike and you need to take it at four in the afternoon. Everybody is different. What's more, there are other medications out there now which will treat insulin resistance other than just metformin, gliburide, and a bunch of these other rather expensive medications. Metformin's a freebie, okay, but many of them are not. So we use bromocryptine. Okay, now bromocryptine is an interesting medication. It's a prescription that was used to treat Parkinson's. Now, I took an interest mm. in bromocryptine because it also treats something called neurolept malignant syndrome, which I was supposed to be some kind of national expert on. <laughs> and the long and short of it is when this stuff came out and somebody identified it as lowering A1Cs, I decided to check insulin levels against the same thing. And that is why we started doing the, uh, the CGMs, because I do that in preparation for starting people on bromocryptine. I need to know 
precisely what's going on so I can time the medications appropriately. If you don't time them right, it's like going to an orchestra and every piece out there has its own set of sheet music to its own set of music and there's no conductor to pull it all together. You have got to know the timing and timing is everything. In medicine, it's effective in mm -hmm. comedy, it's effective in music, and it certainly is effective in what we do here. So we have the three-day test, and then we come back, sit down with you, walk over to the nutraceutical store, and what are some of the items we're looking for? Well, well generally speaking, okay, in our environment, especially here in Florida and the southeast United States, we're deficient in vanadium and chromium. So typically what I do is I start people off on something called magic minerals, which is a chelated mineral complex. Why? Because you still need the zinc and selenium, magnesium, and manganese in addition to the vanadium and chromium. So, but it contains just a small amount of the vanadium and chromium. Why? Because the average adult doesn't have prediabetes. If you, you know, don't want to make people sick with what you're putting in front of them. But it also gets the individual started so their blood pressure doesn't drop too quickly. And you can. You can knock it into the, into, the, into the dirt if you're not careful with these medications. Ooh. They're over the counter, but they are medications nevertheless. Then I wait about a week. One week, maybe two, and then I start them on the Diabetstat, which is a slug, a healthy, hearty, heavy slug of vanadium and chromium. And that generally brings the blood sugar down very, very substantially. Bring it from the 180s down to 90. My goal is to get it into the 80s, believe it or not, but you can't go too fast. What do you add after that? That's when you go for Ceylon cinnamon. You add an additional 500 milligrams daily. The blood sugars will continue to drop. Inositol drops the blood sugars as well as cholesterol. You have to, you have to feather these things in the same way that you land an airplane. You know, anybody, any idiot can land an airplane. But walking away from the landing is where the real trick is, okay? <laughs> you don't auger the airplane into the deck, and you don't lower people's blood sugars so fast that they puke all over the floor. So the trick here is to bring control to their lives. You do it carefully, concertedly, and you do it with some sensitivity to the nausea and the headache and some of the other things that sometimes occur. We can get the regimen started with a visit to the nutraceutical store, Robin. Well, do come on in. We are located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. That's right off of I-Form 434. Give us a call at 407-679-3337. And our office hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5. Our website is stagesoflife.net. You can click on the vitamin store, and that is open 24-7, 365, and just take you right on to the vitamin store. You can buy your stuff there, or once again, like I said, give us a call, 407-679-3337. We'll ship everything to you, but we'd love to see you in our office, so we invite you to come in.